Hello AP Statistics students. In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing quantitative data. We're moving away from categorical data to numbers, quantitative data. But just like categorical data, we first need to draw a picture. Then we'll be able to describe what we see in that picture and analyze our data. So our objective here is to make and interpret dot plots and then describe the overall pattern and any departures from that pattern. And there's a few very specific things that I have in mind when you're describing that overall pattern. So we'll get to that. So here's our first example. The Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, is in charge of determining and reporting fuel economy rates for cars. To estimate fuel economy, the EPA performs tests on several vehicles of the same make, model, and year. Here are data on the highway fuel economy ratings for a sample of 25 model year 2018 Toyota 4Runners tested by the APA. So here we have all the numbers. So the first thing we need is a picture. So we're going to create what's called a dot plot. Dot plot starts off with a nice basic axis, just one. And then you of course want to label that. So that is fuel economy. measured in miles per gallon. And then we have to create a scale here for this. So we come up to our data here and we have to just look through it since it's not in order. What is the biggest and the smallest value? So scanning here, 21.9 I believe is the smallest and 23.3 is the biggest. That will help me do the scale. So down here, I'm going to start at like 22 and over here somewhere I'm probably going to go up to a little past 23.3. I think I'm going to count by 0.5s. So here this will be 22.5. This over here will be 23 and then over here will be 23.5. And then I can just put marks in between for 22.1, 2, that was a little small, I think. Oops, didn't want to do that. Didn't want to do that. We'll just redraw the shape here. Easy enough. There we go. So 22.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. We are going to need 1 over here because the smallest one is 22.9. Then we just start putting in dots. So our first dot is at 22.4. Our next one is at 22.4 also. 22.3. 22.4. So 1, 2, 3, right here. 22.3. Try to line the dots up as much as possible. Your spacing doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's consistent, your picture will look better. 22.1. 22.3. Ooh, I got an even smaller one, oops. So let's extend this line out. 21.5. So one, two, three, four. All right, so I gotta put one dot right here. 22.2, 22 22.7, 22 so 5, 6, 7, 22.8, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 
21.9, I thought that was the smallest one, oops, and 22.4, right there. So there is my dot plot of this data. So now we need to describe what we see. So what are the things that we want to describe? Well, there's a couple. The shape, outliers, the center, and variability. We'll go over these in more detail in a second, but I'm just going to fill them out for this. So when I look at this, the shape of, now anytime we're describing, writing sentences, context. So I'm not going to say the shape of the dot plot. For all I know, there could be 10 dot plots on this paper. You have to give context the shape of the distribution of fuel economy for 2018 Toyota 4Runners is, so the first thing I can say about this is it's roughly symmetric, all right? The left is basically the same as the right and single peaked. All right, there is one big peak in the middle at 24.4, I believe that is. If I could spell the word symmetric, oops, don't hate. Okay, so the shape of the distribution of fuel economy for 2018 is Toyota 4Runners is roughly symmetric and single peaked at 24.4. Next, you describe the shape. Sometimes there are pieces of data that don't fit that shape. Are there any outliers, pieces that don't fit? And in this case, we actually have two. There are two, now I'm going to say possible outliers because we haven't calculated if they're outliers yet, and there is a calculation for that at 21.5 miles per gallon and 23.3 miles per gallon. Okay, we're not sure if they're outliers, but they definitely don't seem to fit the general shape. They're kind of far out. All right, next, center. Where is the middle? There's two options here. You can either do the average, the mean, or the median. Um, I'm going to do the median in this case, the median uh, fuel economy for 2018 Toyota 4Runners in this sample is, all right, I believe in the problem they said there were 25 pieces of data, so I have to count, um, there's the median of course is the middle piece. So there's going to be 12 pieces of data here. I want this one and 12 pieces of data here. So I want the 13th piece of data will be the middle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, and that is 22.4. It does happen to be in the peak. It does not always in the peak. It's 24.4 miles per gallon. All right, variability. Another word for this is spread, okay? How is this spread out? Right now, the pretty much the only one we have is the range, all right? The range of fuel efficiency for 2018 Toyota 4Runners is between 21.5 MPG and 23.3 mpg. All right, so there I have now described the distribution of 2018 
Toyota 4Runners from this sample that they took. All right, another question here. Toyota reports the highway gas mileage of its 2018 4Runners as 22 miles per gallon. Does this data give the EPA sufficient reason to investigate that claim as possibly false? And so we look up here, they say it's 22 miles per gallon. So you really don't care if they do better than that. Everybody would be happy if the cars did better than what they're advertised as. You only care if they do worse in this case. And so only two out of the 25 did worse. That's probably not enough to start an investigation. So I would say here, no, there is not sufficient evidence to investigate this claim because only two out of the 25 cars had less than 22 miles per gallon. Just another analysis question that you might have to answer based off of your picture and the data. All right, now the shape outlier center variability, that's the important thing here. What other options are there? What are the other types of questions and answers you might have there? Let's talk about those because there's a lot. So when you're describing this, you're usually going to be describing some sort of a graph or a chart. What kind? Well, right now we've got dot plots. In a little bit, we'll be talking about stem plots. We'll be talking about histograms. And we'll talk about box plots. All right, so we've got a lot of graphs to take a look at for quantitative data. So some of the things that you're going to have to describe here, describing distributions. All right, you have to talk about shape, outliers, center, and spread, also known as variability. And that can oftentimes make a nice acronym, SOCKS. Shape, outliers, center, spread, or variability. Those are all the things you need to hit. All right, so what about those? So first, shapes. What different type of shapes are there? So we have symmetric, skewed. We have uniform, single, peaked and bimodal are the most popular ones that you definitely need to know. Okay, so I'm going to draw some quick examples of these. They're going to be rough examples, but they hopefully are enough to get you an idea of what they look like. So first, symmetric. That just means the left is basically the same as the right. So something like that okay doesn't have to be a perfect mountain but as long as your left is the same as the right that is symmetric that is also a pretty good example of single peaked All right, now the newest one and one that most people have trouble with, skew. All right, there's two different types of skew. There is skewed left, and there is skewed right. The way I remember that is if you're skewed left, you have a left tail. And if you are skewed right, you have a right tail. So to draw a quick sketch of that, you have your dot plot here. Skewed left means you sort of have a peak over here. But then that peak dies out but sort of keeps going for a long ways 
to the left. Oftentimes you just draw a big curve over the top and you see it looks something like this. And you see this tail going off to the left. That is skewed left. All right, skewed right is the exact opposite. So I'll just draw a quick sketch of that. So we've got sort of a peak over here, but then this trails off to the right, something like that. If you draw a curve over the top, it comes up, you've got your peak, and then it tails to the right. That is skewed to the right. Those are some of the main shapes that you look for that we can have, but it's not the only ones. All right, you can also have uniform. So that is kind of boring, actually, if you have a dot plot and it looks kind of like a rectangle. All of the dots, all the bars, are relatively the same height. Okay, there's no real peak. This is uniform. It's like everybody wearing the same thing. And one more, bimodal. Hopefully you can see the uh, prefix there, bi, that means two. Um, it has two peaks, bimodal. So if I draw a quick sketch here, that means you've got a peak over here and then it lowers out, but then you've got yourself another peak over here. Looks something like that. Again, I oftentimes just imagine if I were to draw a line over the top, there's one peak, there's two peaks, and it comes down. That is bimodal. Okay. So those are the different types of shapes that you can have. Okay. Also, they're very general shapes. They don't have to be perfect. No data is every, ever perfectly bimodal or perfectly symmetric or just perfectly skewed left. It's a rough shape, which I think is why, did I say it up here? The shape of the distribution of fuel economy is roughly symmetric. This is not perfectly the same on the left and the right. It's roughly the same. So it's all very rough shapes. All right, a few other things. Um, next thing you want to talk about is outliers. Oops, forgot the T there, outliers. These are simply things that don't fit the overall shape. All right, outside values that don't, that could be an N there, oops, fit the shape. Now, right now, we don't know how to calculate these outliers, so you just say, hey, there's a possible outlier here that doesn't fit the overall pattern. Another thing you might talk about are gaps in the overall shape. So one thing I could have done up here is I might have said something about this gap right here and this gap right here. The distribution has two gaps in it. Maybe I should have said something about that earlier. Gaps are also important. All right, outliers. And the last one here that we're talking about are the center. Oops, that's the second to last one. There's four. I don't want to forget uh, spread. Center, this is nice and easy. Right now, we've got the mean. Hopefully, you all know how to calculate the average or the median. Those are pretty easy to find. And last, let's see, I've got room over here. Four is the spread. All right, also known as 
variability. Okay, how much does is this data spread out? How much does it vary? So right now mainly you've got the range. So you can report the range as the min all the way up to the max. Uh, sometimes actually you will actually subtract those two to get a number. So I could have come up here and taken my minimum value 21.5 and my maximum value 23.3 and subtracted 21.5 and gotten what is that 1.8 I believe I could have said the range is 1.8 miles per gallon that's how much they are spread out Actually, it's 2.8, isn't it? I think that's 2.8. 21, 22 point, yeah, 2.8, oops. 2.8 miles per gallon is the range. So you can just report the min and the max or subtract to find, it's basically a distance. There we go. All right, so those are the four things you want to describe when you are describing a distribution. Again, we've got the acronym SOX, shape, outlier, center, spread. All right, what I'd like you to do now is pause the video to try one out for yourself. Um, read the problem here. It's asking you to make a dot plot and then describe the shape of the distribution. If you could describe all four parts of the socks, I'd appreciate that. It's good practice. So pause the video, try that out. 